Uh, welcome back to the Stade de la Rabine here in Vannes in northwest France, where we have already congratulated the Baby Blacks of New Zealand on securing their place in the Junior World Championship semi final with a victory of 31 to 26 over Ireland. But boy, was it a close run thing in the end. Ireland uh, threatened uh, to take the victory, couldn't quite break down the resolute uh, New Zealand defense in the end. Uh, so they are in uh, second place uh, in the group, uh, following two good wins over Australia and Fiji. Ireland on 10, having to wait uh, for results uh, elsewhere uh, here in the championship. But New Zealand with three out of three, uh, looking good once again. They've never failed to reach the final of a junior world championship. Four times champions, they were solely, severely tested by the Irish before running out winners uh, by one score and by 31 points to 26. In Pool A, well, there we are. England have thrashed the US of A by 109 points to nil. They top the group of the course in South Africa uh, at the moment uh, playing France, so that could all change. And it'll come down to points difference uh, whether England or Ireland go through possibly, but I reckon with that margin of victory, England look well placed to progress to the Cup semi-finals, uh, although having uh, lost the chance of a bonus point against France first time out. But what we can confirm is that Wales got through having won their pool with a, a nail-biting finish against the Pumitas of Argentina, a final scoreline there uh, in La roche sur of Wales 25, Argentina 20. It's been a family occasion here in Van, in the sunshine, where the local populace have been rewarded with some enterprising rugby from both New Zealand and Ireland. It's great to see the people of Brittany having come out in force to support the youngsters in this competition. Australia, while well, Coach Adrian Thompson gives his uh, reservists an opportunity to display their talents, and that means first starts for Lacey, Burton and Vessels behind the scrum. UJ Sucheni is uh, restored to the starting line at that fullback rather than centre, where Taifu moves out. One up front, it's a whole new front row in Paraka, Reddy and Ala Ala Tour. The suspended Toliofa returns to the second row. Uh, with Wells and newcomer Baldwin joining Captain Curtis Browning in the back row. Well, Fiji, there's plenty for the Islanders to play for. Uh, no surprise, therefore, that Gondola is looking at combinations as he sends his team into battle against the Australians. Locked forward and Captain Ezekiel Mathu steps down to the back row where Laijicia Ambola Nevalu starts in the third different position for his third game in a row. The spotlight really turns on the Islanders in this one who are desperate to retain their Tier 1 status despite the disappointment of losing their opening two matches against New Zealand and Ireland. Australia, well, they lost by one score to Ireland in the opening game and by a similar four-point margin to four times champions New Zealand. And we look to put down a marker here which will hopefully see them rise above their eighth seed status. The long walk onto the field here at the uh, Stade de la Rabine. Fiji uh, led by Esikia Mathu, starting at uh, six this evening. Uh, for the Fijians, uh, Dylan Bauer partners Seru at halfback for the first start of the tournament for him. Center Kunavore steps in from 13 to 12. Ratuthove moves from wing to outside center to accommodate Tui Sese out on the left wing. Another debutant in the championship. So, Simon Mannix, uh, what a cracking game of rugby that was between New Zealand and Ireland. And I think we'll see a fast-flowing game again here between Australia, knowing that out of the Cup semi-finals, and Fiji, who desperately want to, to leave a mark on the tournament. Well, Fiji will be desperate to show the, uh, you know, what really they are capable of. And, you know, we know their open field running brilliance. It's just going to be, can this set piece stand up to Australia tonight? The challenge for Australia is a mental one. They're coming off the back of an outstanding 40 minutes where they dominated New Zealand, just about took that game. 
But tonight, they've got to come out here and they've got to impose themselves. Are they going to be mentally right up for this one? That is the question. But first then, it's the anthems. Advance Australia Fair. And God bless Fiji. Australia Fair rings out across uh, the Bay of Morbihan. Hands on hearts. South Sea Islanders and affable South Sea Islanders for Fiji. young men of Fiji in the resplendent uh, yellow boots and now for their cultural ritual entertaining as it is for the crowd but it has a, a deeper meaning for these young men it's a case of laying down a challenge or accepting a challenge even In midfield wearing six that is their captain Asikia Mathu and uh, on his wrist well usually is a reference to a verse from the Bible First taste of the cultural ritual there for Brad Lacey with a smile on his face. The newcomer making his uh, first appearance in the tournament. Uh, the right wing for Australia wearing number 14. So this is going to be uh, some contest. As uh, Fiji know that uh, they have uh, more work to do in this tournament. Mike Fraser from New Zealand takes charge of this one. And just to remind you, at IRB Juniors, that's the uh, the Twitter address, and uh, get in touch with us on hashtag JWC2013. 
and uh, give us your thoughts on this one and on the competition as it has unfolded on the third day of competition taken in there by Senor Tolea Foa the huge lock forward for Australia wearing four swept downfield the ball finds uh, Dylan Bauer this is Timilai Rokonduru the fullback Fiji looking to get their game underway early Sumia Tamani he's the loose head prop this is a uh, Petheli to Isese over the head of uh, Brad Lacey to Isese giving chase Lacey wanting to create an impression in his first start Stop, Back it go. goes to Hodge doesn't find touch Bauer gathers just inside his uh, own half the shadows lengthening over the uh, stud de la Rabin. it's a little cooler now than it was when New Zealand and Ireland started just over an hour and a half ago Fiji retaining possession a gap it opens up for Musese Nyona Mathawa that's the uh, winger wearing 14 for Fiji came over on from the uh, forward rather from the chest of Mark Baldwin the open side flank forward for Australia to assess it grandfather Yalta played 17 tests for Fiji back in the 60s and his dad was capped at 15s uh, in the early 90s as well so many uh, family ties with uh, rugby in this uh, Fiji side lost possession the end vessels sweeps it downfield gathered though by uh, Kunavore finding himself at inside center possibly more for his defensive effort knowing how threatening uh, Luke Burton and Henry Taifu in midfield for Australia can be it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long opening passage isn't it two minutes of play there Fiji attacking non-stop some big carries through the middle their ball carries right across the field here to assess it here down the outside here did very well to stay in in the field of play here you just see the shoulder rolling back through very well as it is we come to the set piece the part of the game that we know Fiji have struggled in in this tournament and uh, they'll be looking to hold their own bit more intent out them about here tonight than we possibly saw in the last outing so pretty subdued after the the affair against New Zealand in the first round well, Tamani here with his uh, hand on the floor oh, good work there by Vessels initially bringing a uh, Taifu onto the pass there he is Waldo Waldo Vessels Tom Staniforth uh, third consecutive start for the Australian lock Atlanta has been played here to Australia Hodge finds uh, Luke Burton the try scorer for Australia against New Zealand which gave them um, Three white offside. encouragement and hope in the uh, second half of their match just fell Three short white. in the end against New Zealand so Hodge we'll take a pop of the post here from uh, well, some 35 to 38 meters out, I think. You've measured the pitch, uh, Simon. You've walked it. <laughs> yes, I have the length and width of it, and I can tell you it's 70 meters wide and uh, 96 meters long. So uh, 48 each side, and uh, which is quite usual in, uh, in the football stadium that we're playing in here tonight. Have to shorten it up a little bit to get the decent in goal area, and uh, got to say the playing surface is wonderful and. Uh, you know, I can't speak highly enough about the work the ground staff have done. In fact, the whole organising committee in the Van area has been quite uh, quite outstanding, and the, the crowd really enjoying once again a, a good evening of rugby. Showing their encouragement to, to the kicker here, Rhys Hodge sets it up just beyond the uh, the 10 metre line. He's a lovely striker of the ball, usually Rhys Hodge, but he just sees that one drift away to the left. So the first opportunity falls to Australia. And just. Uh, Drops wide. Adrian Thompson is uh, the uh, coach that he is in the red t shirt. And just to remind you, day three of the IAB Junior World Championship marks Keep Rugby Clean Day, the campaign to keep rugby drug free. And uh, today, well, you'll see that players, IAB and French uh, Federation rugby personnel are wearing the Keep Rugby Clean t shirts to show their support and promote awareness of the Keep Rugby Clean program. And if the cameras turned it to the commentary position, then they'd see that. Uh, 
Myself, Wynne Griffith, and my co-commentator Simon Mannix are also wearing red. So here come the men in white and black. Masake and Doge barges the uh, would-be tackler out of the way. There's uh, Fiji, uh, desperate to get the first try in the tournament. Sonia, and yet so far for young uh, Elia Ratusovi, man from Nelsori in his second season. Started the first game at uh, right wing, then moved to the left, and now he's centre field. It's something about Fiji and rugby, isn't it? Doesn't you know? You put any number on their backs, maybe apart from the front row. But I tell you what, they produce backs in their time who quite quite comfortably play in that front row. There, as we saw the big carry from Ndongi there, strong ball carry. It's a, it's a very promising start here by Fiji. I think all the intentions are there. They want to, as you rightly said during the build-up there, when that they want to leave a mark on the, this stage of the tournament. Well, they've shipped over a hundred points in the two opening matches. There's some ill discipline certainly in that opening match. And here goes Luke Burton on the fringes of the Western Force. Oh, lovely work here. Yeah. Burton, good tackle coming in from uh, Seru, the Fijian outside half. That was a tackle that had to be made. It certainly was. A lovely break made down there, down the left-hand side between Burton and the captain. The very impressive, I've got to say, Curtis Browning here. Here's the offload. Browning coming from real depth. Realised he just had to draw and pass. Possibly not the best pass he could have thrown, but then Seru, great cover tackle back. And that's shown a little bit more want about the Fiji inside, whereas we just felt uh, against Ireland the other night, they were just drifted through the game at times. There's a, that little bit more desire that you'd expect to see. It's a Fiji put in some uh, 20 metres out on their own try line. Dylan Bauer, Touch. New Zealand-based, halfback. Yes, yes. In, oh, excellent drive there from... Uh, Australia countered though by Fiji. Stanley Forth. Standing uh, wide there is uh, Tolefoa, sighted and suspended, but uh, back in the ranks. Vessels to Hodge, to Burton. In from the left, that's Alex Northam, scored the breakaway try against Ireland. Which almost uh, saw them clinch that one. This is Michael Wells from Sydney's lower north shore. Looking to bring the ship to, school, to shore there. Pitawa Paraka, the loose head prop, slowly but surely. Australia inching their way forward. Holding on. holding on after the tackle, says referee Fraser. And Fiji will get the penalty. Good defensive work there by Fiji eventually because the Australian scrum just absolutely monstered the Fiji one to claim the tight head. Then the forwards took control. We saw the ball carrying ability within this Australian four pack against New Zealand in the previous round. In this case here, however, Fiji able to hold their line, get a poacher over the ball on his feet and able to turn it over. Fiji. They spent a week or so in uh, Clermont uh, Ferrand uh, prior to uh, moving cross country to uh, Van, where they were entertained by the uh, Clermont squad. An arrangement between Androga in Fiji and uh, Clermont sees uh, Clermont players go out to give some coaching to the Fijians in Androga, and in turn, one or two of the players, including Petheli Yato, who's uh, playing at eight sometimes for Fiji in this tournament, finding. Uh, an opportunity with Clermont for 12 months. So Hodge offloads lovely pass there from uh, Burton to Taufu. Big and strong uh, in the centre field there. The try has to come surely and Hodge is there. Second time in the movement and Rhys Hodge opens the scoring for Australia. Much to the delight of some uh, young people and young supporters in the crowd. Well, Reese Hodge finishes off a very well-worked movement here by Australia. Initially, it was some of the over, overthrow, and it was the open side ball, but he did extremely well. Great timing on the pass there from Burton. Talfa Octa opted to take it into contact. Body position's good. Great support play came in there from Sutini. The ball's clear and available for Vessels. Bang onto the outside. Easy as you like, and very well worked. Hodge staying alive in the movement. Here was the well-timed pass from Burton. There it is, carried on by Tufau, Tufau, 
The ball made available. It's all about presentation here. Give your nine an easy job. Hodge flying through, and that's a very well taken try by Australia, who know that they're going to have to be tight in everything they do and accurate. So it's going to be about controlling the ball at breakdown and controlling your passes as well, as well because Fiji will try and counter and latch onto anything. Hodge needing every inch of the 70 meter wide pitch to claim his score, but a little too far for the conversion. Australia 5, Fiji nil after 10 minutes of play. Eight Australian players returning from the 2012 squad. And 19 of uh, their ranks are members of the Australian Rugby Union National Academy. And the klaxon brings uh, a certain element of uh, the crowd to their feet. Looking to get that Mexican wave going perhaps. Enjoying the atmosphere here at the Junior World Championship on the third day came forward the ball there from the restart from Tom Staniforth and Fiji Through uh, Tunai Vatumbua Can't quite make the ball stick to the hands in the midfield Power controlling Matters there, Rokunduru up from full-back, the big hit coming in from Alan Alatoa, or Ala Alatoa, I should say. Last the 120-kilogram uh, tight head pop for Australia. Hodge delivers to Sutini uh, from full-back. Burton is busy in the opening minutes, as is uh, Taifu, his colleague uh, in the midfield. Trying to get his hands on it is Elia Ratuthove, his opposite number, Hodge. Spraying the passes here, and Doge paying uh, the compliment uh, to the man who tackled him uh, a few minutes, uh, a few seconds earlier, in fact. Alanala Alatoa. Plenty of effort, plenty of energy expended in the opening uh, 12 minutes or so. Curtis Browning, the captain, at uh, eight this evening. Linking up. Vessels to Hodge. To Wells. Push! It's there again. This is a guy that can do some damage. Tolio four. Not making big gains at the moment, the Australian team. Well, they've, they've drawn the penalty, haven't they? But. Uh, they're going side to side at the moment, but uh, Fiji's scrambling pretty well. Uh, you, you've got to say, maybe not defensively, uh, you're going to say it's one of the ideal structures, but they're getting there, they're making, uh, making their tackles count and holding their own ground. It's a battle of big men, a battle of wheels out there to try and win that advantage line and get them behind, but uh, you've got to stay disciplined on the offside line. And uh, if, if anything, we've been a little bit critical of Fiji in this tournament is that lack of discipline and uh, making them pay here now. It's set pieces where we've really felt that Fiji has struggled and uh, Australia usually very good here at executing in these situations. Yeah, far better performance from uh, Fiji against Ireland despite losing by 46 to 3. There's uh, three, uh, three tries in 13 minutes at the top of the second half that uh, really sealed it for the Irish. And Australia Still moving six, using their strength. And power amongst the uh, the forwards to drive towards that Fijian try line. Now Jason Bolenaivalo wearing eight has to be careful that he doesn't lift the uh, the ball carrier above the horizontal because referees uh, don't need much uh, persuasion to go into their pockets. And that uh, Fiji have uh, stolen that one, the kick and the chase downfield. They've been practicing the kick and chase in the lead up to this tournament. But Suteni quite happy to. Uh, Feel the kick, but taking and feeling the uh, the tackle from uh, Tuisese, the number 11 for Fiji. Now then, this is promising. Nyoni Mathawa to uh, the outside half. Seru turning up at outside centre. Snap oh, a yes. lovely pass. <laughs> now then, Nyoni Mathawa, and finally, Fiji have their first to score in the tournament. Claimed by the right wing, Mosesa Nyonamathawa, just 19 years of age a week ago. 
But what about that lovely silky pass that found the winger and opened the door for him? Well, three big, big numbers all around the ball. Have a look at this from Siru just out the back door. And there's a Nathar Mathawi goes in for the try. Easy running. But it's a good chase, though. They've turned it over and uh, left Australia exposed. And here's Hodge with numbers up, trying to attack. We've just got to maintain it. But they're good awareness from Cyril. And we know how good the Fijians are. When they get the ball in their hand with a little bit of space, they're able to pull off those types of passes. Very well played, Fiji. And I can tell you, it's probably the most popular try in VAR in all tournaments so far. It certainly is. The uh, supporters here have been willing Fiji to score a try. And there's the coach, Bill Ngandolo. Secondary school teacher from Suva, former player himself. In actual fact, he played his last game on French territory in the Rugby World Cup quarterfinals of 2007. He uh, was part of a squad that defeated Wales in Nantes just down the road, and then uh, they gave uh, eventual champion South Africa one heck of a fright in Marseille. Hurry up, please. Filimoni Seru gets the hurry up from uh, Mike Fraser. Started at uh, fullback against uh, New Zealand. First time out from the 22, some 15 metres in from touch. To add the conversion of Keone uh, Mathawa's try, not the best effort uh, from uh, Filimoni Seru, but at least Fiji have broken their deck and they're on level terms with Australia after 16 minutes of play. Australia 5, Fiji 5. That's what they needed there, Fiji, to keep themselves because Australia looked like they could take a stranglehold through it just with their dominating forward pack with their big ball carriers. But, well, well, you've got to take the kick off and knock on, unfortunately, there for Fiji. And once again, they're putting themselves under pressure. Yeah, that was a rare mistake by their captain, wearing six. Zakia Marthu. Yeah, forget it. Let's get on with play. Time off. The temperatures uh, have dropped a little, I fancy, in the last uh, few minutes or so. Henry Taifu is the uh, man being replaced, holding his thigh. And the man uh, to replace him is uh, Queensland University uh, student Harry Parker. can play on the wing uh, or at outside centre, and that's where he will take his place here. Parker replaces Taifu. After just 17 minutes of play. The attrition rate's been quite high, hasn't it, during this tournament win? And we, you know, we must stress the four-day turnaround. It's going to put stress on any level of rugby player. But these guys are you know, big young men out here, very physical in their approach to their rugby. And, uh, you know, they're, they're putting everything into this. So you can, you know, see injuries going to play a factor, to, particularly at the back end of this tournament. Fiji have another penalty. Back of the scrum, please. What was that for? Let's wake up, gold! Collapsing. Scrum collapse by the uh, Australian tight head, Alan Ala Alatoa. It's always one I can find difficult to understand that the dominant scrum would possibly, you know, try and collapse it. But uh, anyway, the referee much closer than we are to the action there. It's Australia showing already that their big men scrummaging very well here. Curtis Browning, tireless back rower. Bauer just uh, evades the attention of Tom Staniforth. Seru. Scragged round the neck. He'll get a penalty, I think, for his pains. Ndoge, the tight head. Oh, lovely work again by Kunavore. At the inside centre. The ball is sticking to the hands, isn't it? Uh, Ndoge. Can play on the loose or on the tight head. Can uh, Masaka and Doge? Band is finally over. <laughs> Where do you believe it? Oh well, the ball didn't go forward, says uh, referee Frazier. So play on. And Fiji building up ahead of steam here through Kimweli Tokalau, 19-year-old uh, lock forward, <laughs> snapping that out of the air was uh, the captain Mathu Kunavore. Couldn't take it. And this time the ball has been lost forward, but quickly snapped up though by the scrum half vessels. 
family moved to uh, Australia back in uh, 2001. Uh, well, the vessels of family, Rock and Duru. Well, it's all happening here, isn't it? it certainly is. An excellent work at the breakdown there by the Australian, the Australian back row. Wow. Vessel's not his best option there. He's looked lively early on as Vessels, but gee, you've opened up a can of worms here. Well, not the best of skills, I have to say, but it's uh, exciting just the same as uh, Belendau goes in search of the uh, Australian 22. And uh, Fiji, you have to say, well, they're really up for this one. No sooner said, not to give away a penalty. Can you come here? Come here. Yes, Rockaduro is going to be spoken to here, launching. Like that. I think he was being generous calling it a clean out there was referee Fraser. So Bellendale taking the ball into contact here. We may just see it. Just come the way we know. We're just going to come back for the penalty here, but being spoken to. Rokuduro, so penalty given away, but it wasn't for his attempted clean out. It was more for hands in the ruck. Well, Rokunduru saw yellow against uh, New Zealand. Three yellow cards and two red cards shown to the Fijians in that opening match. And there's Curtis Browning, player of the year at under 20 level last season in Australia. Reaching out, Tom Staniforth. Forwards have it dragged into the uh, the mall there by uh, Tokalau, Fiji number five. Lovely pass. Good angle from Brad Lacey, member of West's Scarborough Club in Perth. On the radar of uh, the Western Force franchise. Staniforth again. Gets through a lot of work, does uh, Tom Staniforth. The Australian lock forward. Let it come now, White. Let it come, White. There it is, we can see the ball. Release. Andrew Here Reddy, the hooker, has it. Play the ball, please. So, Hodge, will he go for the post again? No, it just uh, sets his mark. And finds touch just on the uh, Fiji 22 meter line. Well, they'll fancy launching an attack from here. They've driven their last three line-outs. I fancy them to take it again through the middle because they really feel that they can get through what you might say is a bit of a soft underbelly here through the middle here with this Fiji and Ford pack. If they get the structure right, which they've done a very good job thus far. Yeah. Andrew Reddy adds his not inconsiderable weight to the uh, forward effort. That's Browning, the captain. Pushing Fiji back into the 10 meters or so. Alan Ala Alatoa. Well picked up there. May have been Staniforth again. Roughly Fraser on the spot to can Fiji weather the storm here. Two, three meters out from the Fijian try line. In goes uh, Senor Tolia for the huge uh, lock forward for Australia. Hodge, lovely hands from Burton, couldn't find uh, Ten white, offside. the replacement. Advantage. Harry Parker. The referee white. Fraser was playing advantage to uh, Australia in any event for the offside. I fancy the scrum here, I'd imagine, when they'd be uh, pretty confident with the way that their set piece is performing uh, thus far, and yeah, they've gone for the scrum here. Interesting option here to take the ball back. That they're within two metres of the line, and uh, the player had come to a standstill. He had timed their vessels to organise his forwards to restart it again. The Fijian defensive line was set to take the ball back another 10 metres to bring it forward two to where the trial line was. A bit of an odd decision in that situation there. Now it's the time where the forwards are going to step up and really deliver. Yeah, so Tenny is standing right behind the uh, scrum here. Touch. Hodge is over to the Six. left. Parker is over to the right with Brad Lacey. That's how uh, the back line uh, splits up for Australia. Get a bit closer. Yes, please. 
Mike Fraser, no different to any uh, other referee in this tournament, yeah. insisting on the, uh, the accuracy and the setting of the scrum. Sunia Tamani against Alan Ala Alatoa. Sit. Fijian getting it's down low. And the scrum has collapsed on the far side. It's there. Vessels between the legs. It's still advantage Australia here. Yeah. Uh, Fiji being penalised for the collapsed scrum. And Masaka and Doge is the man penalised. Although, as you said earlier, can't see why anyone would want to pull the scrum down deliberately. Under pressure, perhaps. And I'll just have a look. I think it was more of a case of being under pressure there because the uh, Australian got it. The Australian front row got a very good hit on there. Ala, Alato on this side here. He'd been penalised earlier. The ref came across to watch him. Now we'll see the referee Fraser change sides again this time and keep a very close eye on Ndongi on this one. Yapti Paraka to see if he's got to hold it, hold it steady. Reedy, Ala Alatoa. They've got some work to do here. But they've got to, they've, they want to come away with points from here because uh, 25 minutes gone, five apiece, turning down the kicks at goal. And, you know, there are times in, in some games where you feel just keep chipping away at the scoreboard. Keep it ticking over. Keep it ticking over. Got to come away with points from this attack here, Australia. Yeah, the scrum in the shadow of the Fijian posts and uh, Wessels waits for the scrum to settle. And Browning picks up at the base. Uh, Hodge to Soteni. No way through the Rokonduru with the, the big hit on the uh, Australian fullback. Wessels, good pass again. Hodge into Staniforth. That's those long legs of his going. Drive uh, onwards by uh, Tolia Four. Sets it up nicely. And there is Paraka, the man born in Port Moresby in uh, Papua New Guinea. Interesting character. Uh, good defensive effort there from the Fijians. Fortunately, it's going to cost them a yellow card, though, I think, here for repeated offences in the green zone. Another offside, and that's Kerry Kerry, is it, making his way off of the yellow card? I'm sure you're going to pronounce it a lot better than I am, Wynn. <laughs> Spot on, Simon Silasa Kerry Kerry, making his first uh, start uh, in the tournament. Plays for Vatukula in the uh, Fiji Digicel Cup. Let's call up to the squad, uh, just less than a... A fortnight before the team uh, left the Fijian shores. So he's had to make up for lost time, and he'll have uh, 10 minutes in the bin to contemplate. Well, Australia opted to clear it very quickly out of the last scrum. I think with numbers up, you've got to see them try and march this one over from the middle here, right to march it right over, even though they are seven metres out. And as always with scrum, you know, one of the continuing problems for everybody in the game of rugby today is the amount of time that's been spent, whether it's been resetting, resetting, going back and again. And uh, we can see we've already been down here about four minutes now, haven't we? we? Haven't had a satisfactory completion to date. And again, there are options left and right here for Australia with uh, Sutini up from fullback just inside. The, there he is in the centre frame there, directly uh, in line with the posts. Options left and right, and here they come, going right, and Curtis Browning will go himself. That's a captain's try, and a second for Australia. Suteni will appear to have been a decoy runner. Uh, the Fijian backs keeping their eyes on him, perhaps, but uh, taking their eyes off that man, Curtis Browning. It's uh, a second score. For Australia, they lead by 10 to 5. We we'll have a look here on the side of the scrum as Ballandale. His job is to tackle the first man with the ball. And that's going to be Browning. He misses a tackle, steps on his inside. OK, usually you'd say your number eight there is going to get across and cover and fill that hole, which would have been Bolinavalu. But unfortunately, he's packing on the other side of the scrum. Hence, you see the big hole there. And Browning just stepped on the inside of Alan Dow and made his way over for a very well-taken try. Good awareness from the Australian captain. Hodge. An easy conversion for the Australian outside half. It's a seven-point gap, and uh, Australia lead by 12 to 5. So here we are, Browning off the base. The handoff, the big handoff of uh, Johnny Mbalendau. And Browning had the strength to barge over.
That's Kere Kere in the uh, on the naughty boy's chair. <laughs> They've been there a few times this tournament, haven't they? I thought you were going to say that you'd been there a few times yourself, Simon. Oh, come on, when? <laughs> <laughs> I know, not that long ago, <laughs> either. <laughs> yeah. Simon Mannix, former All Black, now uh, in the coaching setup at Munster. Advantage over. Punch to Soutini. The lively Luke Burton. Hodge. Stanley Forth had called for that one. Mbole Naivalu. Started at uh, lock forward. Found himself at six in uh, the game against Ireland. And now starts at eight in this one. Tackle only. Goal going forward. Tackled Over. situation there called by the referee. Not coming free. Deeming that the Australian team had possession, carrying into the into the breakdown area there. There are plenty of numbers all around it there for Australia. Baldwin. Okay. Alea Latal as well. Alea Latal. Stop. 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 Okay. Ten minutes remaining of the uh, first half. And it's closer than uh, one would have uh, anticipated, perhaps. Twelve to five. And what's good to see, Simon, is that uh, the crowd, having seen a, a very good game of rugby uh, earlier on, they've uh, stayed for this one, and they will stay uh, right to the end. Come on. And it's, it's a good crowd, as I say, uh, getting on for 9,000 probably here at uh, Stade de la Rabine. It's a compact little stadium on the edge of the town centre. It's a university town and uh, uh, a former um, port town as well. Not now occupied by a lovely marina and some uh, expensive and exclusive uh, boats as well, it has to be said. That's for sure. Crouch. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Let's go. Here it is. Mike Fraser. Yes, I'm happy with that distance. As uh, both hookers set their marks. It's a little complicated, isn't it? Oh, it certainly does. <laughs> Touch. Sit. Steady. Yes, nine. That's nine. Us. Nine white. Driving again. Off the base of a solid scrum. Wessels. He got support from Harry Parker here, looking to get away from Rokonduru, Australia, looking for a third try. A solid tackling from the uh, Fiji fullback Timilai Rokunduru. Well, once again, we see the hole they're going to exploit is going to be just inside here because then there's no number eight, of course, with the yellow card to get across and cover. Rokunduru does superbly well here. And Parker, good awareness going towards the touchline, threw it back into the field to play more in hope than anything, but he didn't want to, he didn't want to be the guy to take it out. So they've won the attacking line out. Well played, Harry Parker. Stanifoth uh, aids uh, Wells at the back of the lineout. Fellow to Sesse, the uh, winger wearing 11. He was alert to the threat of uh, world of vessels there. But here came Australia once again, looking to uh, set it up. 15 metres out from the Fijian try line. Release! Fiji. Going to keep the defensive line. So therefore, such a, a huge threat for Australia. The man wearing five, four rather. That's why they're choosing to keep it close, isn't it? As they think they've got mismatch out here on the outside. The beautiful kick in behind, and he does superbly well. Uh, that young man will be absolutely delighted. Uh, has been chomping at the bit as a Brad Lacey, and he has some uh, family supporters as well in the crowd here. Yeah, has lived in South Africa and in Ireland as well as Australia. Brad Lacey. They've taken it through the middle here, and then on this occasion here, they've gone three or four phases of play here. And it was a lovely read there from Burton. 
Lacey, they realised the defence was going to be up flat. Rolls it back in behind there in that situation. A very well-weighted kick, executed, executed superbly, and a very well-taken try. Good to see the variation in the game. They're taking it through the middle. They obviously, the Australians feel very confident relying on their power around the fringes, and it's where they cause New Zealand a lot of trouble uh, in the second round here at the uh, Junior World Championship. But on this occasion here, the ball came back at the right time, and the right time is when you've just got that little nudge on on front. You've got them going forward. They're on the back foot. No one in the backfield. Good awareness. Well taken try. Yeah, Fiji is still down to 14 men. Remember, Kere Kere cooling his heels in the sin bin. So third try for Australia. Hodge with a difficult kick. That's away to the left. It's a good vision here by uh, Luke Burton in midfield. Just see the backfield there, completely empty, obviously. And when you're hard on your line in defence, it's very difficult to get someone into that sweeper role. And, uh, well, particularly also when you're down to 14 men, that, you know, something's going to give somewhere on that occasion there. It's about having your head up and reading the space in the backfield. Very well played. Ball bouncing everywhere. One strong element of uh, Fiji's play in the game still against New Zealand was the uh, the restarts. We couldn't quite uh, regather that one as Dylan Bauer is flattened in the tackle. Seru, that's uh, Mbole Naivalu. So. Baleindao. Fiji controlling the ball here, but not going too far with it. Valendale again, oh, what an offload, just unfortunately <laughs> unable to hold it there, and a chance for Australia to open it up. They've got numbers stacking up out on the left-hand side. Yeah, one or two Fijian players down. Patawa Paraka. Banajoba. Wessels. Tolefoa. Ships on to uh, Curtis Browning. Doing a lot of the, the carrying as uh, the Australian captain. He's had a taste of uh, Super Rugby already. Uh, should be a, a gap here, perhaps, as the Fijian, the injured Fijian, uh, gets some assistance. Alan Alala Toa. It's a little untidy. Skills not of the highest level, perhaps, but... Uh, I think the comforting thing from... I, I'm going to say from both coaching viewpoints here, from both teams, is... There's plenty of endeavour out there, isn't there? As is, we just see Fiji Kerika making his way back on to bring them back up to 15. And, uh, well, missed tackles stacking up against the Fiji already with five missed tackles. And the scoreboard showing the result, isn't it? 75. But what you've got to like is the endeavour. Again, and Australia have come to play a little bit more. They had to build on that second half performance against Australia the other night, which really they'd done enough to get over the line. And that one, hadn't they? You would have thought. And New Zealand held on with a, a lot of determination. And an awful lot of pride, and as well, as always with New Zealand rugby, I'd say with a, you know, a fair amount of um, a good technique in there as well. But uh, on, in this one here tonight, Fiji, you know, I've had a very disappointing tournament so far from what we know what Fiji and rugby is capable of produ producing. And uh, it's good to see them out here tonight, not giving and really having a crack from any situation. Yeah, Fiji finished eighth in 2010 in Argentina. The best ever finish was sixth in Italy two years ago. But last uh, year, they defeated Italy 19-17 to to finish 11th uh, in the tournament. Italy were relegated, but the good news from an Italian perspective is that they've just won the Junior World Rugby Trophy and they're on the way back into this tournament next season. But it looks as if the USA and, uh, who knows, maybe Fiji could be battling it out in the basement battle once again 12 months on. But it's difficult, isn't it, that with age grade rugby, you don't get a, a second chance, do you? It's, it's, another, it's another team next year. It's a new team. It's quite right, isn't it? We don't see, uh, you know, we see, you, you, of, of course, because of the age, we're going to see very high turnover in players. And we're not going to get players who are going to be playing three, three, uh, three years at this level, are we? And, uh, you know, that is, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of the 
nuances, if you like, of uh, this tournament. But I think it's an important one nonetheless. And uh, albeit difficult, uh, the United States team who had done so well to qualify last year, potentially they're going to be out this second year generation, couldn't kick on with it. We just saw there now... Uh the, the red T-shirts I've been talking about, keep it rugby clean. Well, it's about education, and uh, each team at the IAB Junior World Championship has been educated about the dangers of doping and uh, using drugs in sport. It's supported by uh, elite-level players such as Vincent Clerc from France, Felipe Contepomi from Argentina, and uh, the British and Irish Lions captain Sam Warburton from Wales, not forgetting South Africa's Brian Habana and David Pocock from Australia. All agree that there is no place for doping in rugby. Bill Gandolo looking on and uh, plenty of things to contemplate I'm sure looking at the second half here and at the uh, the games to come because in fairness to Bill Gandolo what he said uh, coming into this tournament was that they're desperate to retain their tier one status and uh, they knew it is going to be difficult and it's going to be a difficult week ahead for them as well as the uh, the big hitters in the tournament uh, look ahead to the uh, to the cup itself. Of course, there are rankings to play for in the uh, the last week of the tournament. Uh, the Breton people enjoying uh, their baguette. Although I should call it a sandwich. Uh, it's not a baguette in France, is it? No, no, no. The baguette is uh, when there's nothing in it. It'll be a sandwich, uh, Monsieur. A sandwich. <laughs> we could possibly do with one at half time. Win, I think. Indeed. So, applause uh, for Filimoni Seru, uh, injured in that uh, attempt at a tackle, and his replacement is Jueli Douglas, an ex uh, Fiji schools representative, uh, the Queen Victoria School. Heavily represented here in the uh, Fijian squad. Crouch! Touch. Sit. Yes, nine. out at half four centre, taken up by Mbole Naivalu. The number eight, that's Bauer. Yes, yes. In the uh, armchair behind the dominant Australian scrum. Advantage over, says referee. Paraka. Taking it up almost to the 22. And Vessels almost has his head taken off his shoulders. Baldwin. It's a David Pocock style flanker, is uh, Mark Baldwin. He's made the shift to the shoot shield rugby this year in just his second year of grade rugby. That's the man wearing seven for Australia. Lovely pass. Suteni straightens up, can't quite get the ball out uh, to Northam yes, on the on. left. Hodge can always rely on uh, on Tom Staniforth. Certainly can. Uh, he's what? carrying the ball extremely oh, well, but just not yeah. many options out here for the Australians at the moment. It's all just a bit flat. Michael Wells has a go initially. And that's Lacey getting a, a stray boot or two for his uh, efforts. Set up again for Baldwin. That's a fourth try, and that's the bonus point. Just before the break, then, for Australia. Mark Baldwin, the man from the Randwick Club. Crosses for Australia's fourth. It looks a bit like David Pocock as well, doesn't he, from here? It certainly does. We'll just have a look here. They had to bring it back. They got into the wide channel, but then wanted to use again the forward runners. Really does very well. The squeeze ball option. Fiji have got no access to it whatsoever. And here comes with good strength. Baldwin does very well. Good body height. You'll just see the ball there. Delivered superbly. And there it is, the low drive. Seen just hit the head up. Able to see what's in front of him. Saw that they were the defence was not tight, set around the ruck. It's where Australia have had all their success tonight. And uh, at the moment, it's where they've got to keep on plugging. Just keep on chipping away through the holes. Because out wide, Fiji have been defending them pretty well up until now. So Reese Hodge has more kicking practice just the uh, one successful uh, kick from four as we approach the break here and most of the play in this uh, first half uh, bar the opening uh, 
five ten minutes or so has been in the Fijian 22 as referee Fraser calls a halt uh, to play and that is the final piece of action of the first half a fourth try and a bonus point for Australia and uh, we arrive at the break with the scoreline which reads Australia 24 Fiji 5 Here in Van, it's Australia 24, Fiji 5 at half time, and Australia have already secured a bonus point courtesy of four tries scored in the opening 40 minutes. And Fiji, well, they have finally crossed uh, the try line. Yoni Mathawa, the Fijian wing three quarter, crossed for that try early on, but it's been all Australia in the first half, 70% of the possession, and most of the play has happened in or around the Fiji 22. So let's see, Kirikiri saw the yellow card in the opening half. The handling errors committed, well, Fiji 4 to Australia's 2, and Fiji considered the most uh, turnovers as well. So everything to play for in the second half, uh, certainly from a Fiji perspective, they are desperate to retain their tier nation status. And they are progressing slowly under Bill Ngandolo. And it's been a, a proud day for the Lacey family who've seen young Brad uh, claim his first score in the first start for the green and gold. Michael Wells, former captain of St. Ignatius College, Riverview in Sydney, wears a six for Australia. And Reese Hodge has... Uh, Scored a try and uh, kicked a uh, conversion. <laughs> Two conversions, rather. So 24 to 5 at the top of the second half. We spoke about it in the build up whether Australia, you know, the challenge was going to be a mental one for them coming off the back of that very disappointing and very close loss to uh, New Zealand. What state of mind are we going to be in? They've shown that they'll roll up for this one and they'll really want to try and really drive it on and crank it up from here on in. Yeah, and at this stage they're looking uh, at that uh, second middle group of uh, games during uh, finals week. They came into the tournament seed at eighth. They can. Uh, climb as high as fifth because they will not make it to the cup semi-finals we've already seen New Zealand progress as indeed we have seen uh, Wales also it is a close run thing uh, they got the uh, the nod over Argentina right at the end of their game at uh, La Roche Surion it looks as if England uh, have qualified as well and the game being played at the moment is the last game at La Roche Surion and that is between reigning champion South Africa and hosts France it's a close run thing and the latest we have is that South Africa lead by eight points to seven The scrum half There's Fiji living dangerously here, five meters out from their own uh, try line. No clear release where you are. Go, Alex, go, Alex, go! Big tackle on uh, Ndoge by Mark Baldwin, who clinched uh, Australia's uh, fourth try and uh, bonus points just before the break. One-handed. <laughs> so Lassa Kere Kere loses the ball forward. It's advantage Australia here just outside the Fiji uh, 22 wrestles. Not the best of passes, but uh, Toliofa does well. Wrestles, <laughs> lovely sleight of hand there, bringing Michael Wells onto the ball. Gets help from uh, Alex Northam, the left winger for Australia. Over the top, seven white. 
Referee Fraser was uh, waiting uh, an advantage for Australia in any event. Look for the Fiji number seven is what he said. Coming over the top. It's a very good play here by Fiji, though. They're aware of the, how close they were to the touchline. Holding the player up. Don't let them get to ground. And that situation there, it's still a maul. And uh, they can force the turnover. But as it is, there was a penalty at the previous breakdown, as you said, was against uh, Ballandau. was from coming over the top of the penalty and knocking the ball out of the number nine's hands. He's not allowed to play him in that situation. And Hodge opting to, opt to take the three points. And, uh, well, we saw in the first half they were refusing these kicking options, weren't they? But this one here, they were obviously very, you know, very keen just to sort of keep chipping away, keep chipping away at this lead and just build on it. Yeah, they can do no more than score a bonus point, which they have already, and keep the scoreboard turning over. Hodge adds uh, his first penalty to uh, two conversions. And Australia are out to 27 points to five. Twelve points then is uh, Hodges' tally in this game. Former Australian schools representative now playing for Manly in Sydney. Sutini. So Sends that one far downfield. Rokunduru just can't do much about that one. Tried his best to keep the ball in play. That will be a line-out for Fiji on their own 22. Superb clearance kick there by Satini. You saw the space downfield there and absolutely set down a rifle of a kick down the right-hand touchline. Rokunduru doing his best to keep the ball in play, but unfortunately for them, Unable to do so, but nonetheless, a line out here, and uh, you can be sure of one thing, they're not going to be kicking away from here. Still a bit untidy. We're there about to 10. He started at centre against uh, Ireland first time out, but he seems more at home uh, at fullback, more time perhaps to uh, consider his options. You know, if we, if we had to point at one thing that possibly cost Australia the, that, uh, on that, uh, that day was their midfield defence. They've been opened up a lot, weren't they, by particularly Daly, who uh, obviously, is, as, we, as we mentioned in the previous game, has left the tournament early with, a, uh, I think, a broken hand, which is going to be operated on. But, uh, you know, he, he really made the difference through the midfield. And you're quite right, so he's looking, looking more dangerous. And an opportunity for him to attack here. Hodge, and that is the man we're talking about, Sutani. Pass out wide to Brad Lacey looking for his second score. Ball comes forward off uh, Michael Wells. And we see there number 20. That's uh, the replacement uh, for Australia, Patrick Seal. Can't quite see who's, uh, who's left. Is it uh, the captain, Curtis Browning, perhaps? Here we go. White scrum. It certainly looks that way. Uh, can't see the number eight. Uh, He's got through a lot of work, hasn't he, so far in the tournament, and uh, probably rightly so, to rest them up and prepare them for the next stage. As you know, we've mentioned a number of times, the four-day turnaround, very taxing on these guys. Recovery time, very short. You've got a really privileged recovery, and I think uh, everybody aware of player welfare and just trying to rotate things around and use the full squad, and I, I think that's a smart move by the Australian coaching, coaching group. Sit! Yes, nine. Patoa Paraka. Get a better view of him in this uh, second half. Once again, pressure coming on through the set piece again. They're putting pressure on the uh, Fijian line out, forcing the turnover. This time it's through the scrum, forcing the turnover again. Fancy this one going through the middle. Well, no, I don't because we're going to get a free kick. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. Just ask you not to walk in and jump. That's exactly what you did. So quickly taken by the captain, Zakia Mathu. Douglas, the replacement, straight down the throat of UJ Suteni. Ulupano Suteni. Down on the team squad list as a wing. Hodge loses possession forward. Referee Frazier waits advantage. Uh, Mr. Frazier will need a new P in his whistle, I think, by the next game. Well, Sateni, he, he, he identified the space very well, this play here. Shaped to go right and then bring it back down the left-hand side. But unfortunately, Hodgman stripped from behind there and the ball lost, lost control of the ball there. But uh, 
does seem to have pretty good awareness about him since he sees the space pretty well there from the backfield. So the first half uh, finished in uh, the Fiji 22 and the opening minutes of the second half again sees Australia camped in the Fijian 22. Touch. 27 to Six. 5, 7 minutes uh, into the it's second nine. half. Tonavore. Just can't get away. Been impressed by Kunavori tonight, when with his work rate, getting through a lot of work. He's been involved, you know, picking and going around the sides, and here he is coming in. Big heel there from the Fijian scrum. They want to get it out, that Channel 1 ball. Trying to cover things up, Kunavori, but unfortunately, you know, from a Fijian perspective, the defence too good. I think he uh, he could do well in a, in a better team. Uh, Kunavori, and he particularly wanted to do well here in France, and we remember, of course, where the faction is... Uh, Late brother Valeli Kunawario died last uh, November, I think it was. Former Toulouse flyer. Bessos digs it out for Staniforth again. That's uh, the huge uh, Alan Ala Alatoa. His father Vili represented Samoa at the 91 Rugby World Cup. Vessels. Oh, lovely pass. Finding Andrew Reddy. Industrious hooker from Brisbane. Here. Stay white. White. Plays for the Easts Club. There. Guys, there's too many bodies on the oh, ground. It's an untidy up. heap no, of bodies. Too many bodies on the ground. You just see the reluctance of referee Fraser there to blow the whistle there, wasn't there? A bit of a, a bit of a sigh and I think just too many bodies on the ground. And, uh, you know, he's, he's trying to encourage a positive opening, open running game. In fact, he's refereed very well up to uh, right up until this point, been, been impressed with his performance. Already mentioned the Salmon influence. We just caught a glimpse of Senior Tolia 4. He actually played for the Salmon in the 20s uh, in the uh, championship in 2012. There he is wearing four and he could still represent Samoa at uh, uh, senior level and uh, Samoa do have an A side so uh, having played for their under 20s that doesn't debar him from playing for the national side despite the fact that he's wearing the green and gold here wrestles to uh, Hodge oh, lovely pass again Suteni just can't get that pass away Rokunduru did well the uh, Fijian fullback wrestles has a quick look left and right which way will he go Hodge have a go himself, looking for a second try, held up though well, held up by Mbule Naivalu. The threat is still there in the form of uh, Baldwin, the open side flanker. White Ratu Thove is in the way there, he has to make an effort to get out of the way and uh, try and avert uh, Mr. Fraser's gaze at CEO. He finally gets to ground. Last Pick and go here. Advantage, offside, number two. Australia still have the advantage for offside. The dancing feet of Luke Burton scored uh, that cracking try for Australia against uh, New Zealand in the two second wide, round. Latumbua is the man penalised, the uh, Fijian hooker. The Fijians here right on their own try line, but no surprise to see Australia opting for the scrum. You're in front of the last feet. Take a step. Captain. I from think an official good, warning. Not go back into the place we were before. It's a general, general warning, general I think, warning, uh, yeah. for Fiji. Hang on, the referee's making a mistake here. You cannot set a scrum within five metres of the line. You cannot oh, award a penalty. Right. Well done. Well done, referee. <laughs> <laughs> well we're, done, we're Simon not, Mullix. We're not mic'd up. <laughs> 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 years as a player of doing that how, 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 loud, helping the how referee. loud would you have shouted that had you been down on the touchline I wonder <laughs> Touch. Sit. again it's Suteni right behind that uh, scrum he was a decoy runner earlier on when Browning got his try and they're looking for the same uh, option again through uh, Patrick Sio, his replacement Stanley Forth ball checked and the left arm there wrestles digs it out for Hodge offloads to Luke Burton who had appeared to have been wrong-footed but Northam 
somehow finds his way in at the corner claiming uh, a second try for him in the tournament and that's Australia's fifth in this game well they've been pretty complimentary about the Fijian defense out wide and earlier on they showed their ability to cover the play in this situation here the man on what undoes them is the good footwork good footwork of Burton shaped to the outside and unfortunately just caught looking in at the ball on that occasion there was the try score Nimantawa from earlier. We'll just have a look there. He got squared up in defence. What we mean by that, he had the shoulders and the hips facing downfield. In that situation there, you want to use the touchline as a defender, as an extra defender if you like, so you can shepherd the player towards the touchline there. The young man there guilty on that occasion of getting squared up and good work by Burton and a well-taken try once again by the Australians. Dare I say it again, though, it stemmed from the set piece where they are just all over Fiji. Yeah, solid set piece from Australia. Hodge. That's uh, not a bad effort from the outside half. He's spraying them everywhere, but not quite on the mark. 32 to 5, and it uh, looks as if Australia will be uh, competing for the uh, fifth to eighth uh, positions. In this tournament, Alex Northam has started all three games for Australia in this tournament. He was a, a late call-up last season, but he uh, never got onto the field of play. This game coming to you live from the Stade de la Rabine in Vannes in uh, northwest France. As the sun sets on the uh, Islanders of Fiji as well. 32 to 5 they trail. Hey, sorry. Sorry, what's going, boys? Yeah, we didn't hear it. Over here. We have heard quite a bit of the, uh, the referee's whistle in uh, this match. The Fijians have been staying uh, in Van here at the uh, Abatiale in Labono, a 13th uh, century historical site. And there was a wedding there the other day. The bride requested to take a photo with the team. Uh, but there was no mention of the groom uh, for some reason. <laughs> I tell you one thing they could have requested is possibly the Fijians coming to sing because aren't they just wonderful singers? Uh, every Fijian rugby team that I've known, beautiful voices and sings, uh, sing a wonderful song around the, uh, around the guitar. Certainly have many a time I've uh, woken up thinking I'm in heaven when I'm on the sevens circuit because the Fijians are on the same floor as me, going through their usual routine of prayer meetings and uh, hymn singing and uh, lovely harmonies uh, from the uh, Fijians. They could find uh, the same rhythm on the field of play, then they would be higher up in the rankings uh, than they are. You've got to form the line out first. Referee insisting on a technicality here. But you cannot walk into the line with the line out set. And then in. a slight overthrow there. Look for all that Baldwin had knocked it on, and he had. Yeah, we thought he'd done well to recover. And from uh, a Fijian rugby perspective, well, it's, they have to be congratulated on the new sports uh, stadium, which uh, opened two nights ago in Suva. The new ANZ stadium was opened by the Prime Minister, Commodore Murenge and Marama, heralding a new dawn for sporting bodies uh, on the islands. And yesterday hosted the centennial match between the flying Fijians and the classic All Blacks. And you missed out on that as well, Simon. Well, it certainly wasn't. You could, I, I can be claimed to be an all black, an ex all black, but certainly not a classic one. Uh, some uh, notable players returned to the islands. Uh, Joe Rocafoco amongst them for that uh, inaugural match at the uh, new stadium. So it all goes well for Fijian sports, an athletics track as well. So Fiji finding themselves in the Australian 22 there. Bolen Naival setting it up. That's the captain, Ezekia Mathu, the quietly spoken Ezekia. Ball is tied up there somewhere, dug out eventually by Dylan Bauer. Douglas on the uh, angle is uh, Kunavore. Change of direction, bringing in some Vatumbua. Could be a second try here, away goes Ratu Thorve. 
But the try has been claimed by Mbole Naivalu, the number eight. And that, once again, just when you thought the game was dying a death, that Fiji came up with the ball and over went uh, the number eight, Laijaisa Mbole Naivalu. This is the depth there from the hooker here, just charging onto the ball. Beautiful offload there. That was uh, Latumbua who made the pass. And here he comes, the big number eight on hand. Who's been impressive tonight, hasn't he? Bolinvalu with uh, with his back row partner, Ballandau. They've worked very hard. I love this offload here into the hands of Ratukove. And here on hand to score the try. Bolinvalu, good finish. Well taken try by Fiji. Well, I have to correct myself. Oh. It's the captain, Mr. Kia Mathu. From this angle, I thought it was the number eight, but uh, my apologies, my mistake. It's a Kia Mathu, it's a captain's try then. That's a second try for the Fijians. Well worked and uh, set up initially by uh, the centre, Nasoni Kunivore. Power, his first kick of the match. And again, the clapping you hear in the background, that's encouragement uh, from uh, the French contingent uh, in the crowd. And Bauer, that's another two points. And that brings uh, some respectability to uh, the scoreline. 32-12 now, the second the try for Fiji. So they've broken their deck in this match, and it's just the US of A that have failed to score a try in the tournament to date. And I won't make the mistake I made earlier when there was a team trailing by 20 points with 20 minutes to go, and I said the game was dead and buried. Because I tell you what, if they keep playing like this, they could cause a bit of an upset here. But beautifully taken try. And, well, we're quite right when we see that. It definitely was the captain yeah. <laughs> who got over for that try. Charlie Douglas as well to hold up uh, the Australian scrum half, Waldo Vessels. And surely they'll get the put in at the scrum here. And they're all there, all the forwards together. You could throw a blanket over them. Now then, the breakthrough downfield. That's uh, Kunevore. Make no mistake about that. He gives chase to the number 12. As Hodge turns his back against the storm. Northern looks to get away. Almost gets away. Pumping those legs, but he's caught by the shirt tails. Last feet. I think it's Ratu Thove, the uh, Fijian number 13. So Tenny hoists the high one. Call for by the uh, scrum half Bauer, who was back there covering, like every good scrum half should, to Ellie Douglas. Didn't look where he was passing. And the ball's like a hot potato, and it has to be advantage off Australia, white. I'm afraid. Enough goal. Just off white. Gold scrum. It's difficult, really, for Australia now, isn't it? You oh, know, the. 20-point advantage. This is the difference between a good side and, and the very good side. I mean, New Zealand in this situation, they'd be relentless, wouldn't they? They'd still apply the pressure, turn the screw. But, uh... no, it's, a, it, it's a challenge for these young men, and I think, uh, you know, I think we've seen the New Zealand team struggle a little bit at times. Uh, saw it in the earlier game this evening against Ireland, out to a 20-point lead, and able, unable to really kick on with it. It's, uh, you know, it's a part of the maturity, it's part of the growth that these young men will go through, and uh, as they gain more experience and are exposed to rugby at the higher level, they'll be more than aware of the demands that are required. So two new props on for it's been Australia. Yeah, it's been good. Keep it up, please. 17, that's uh, Silatolu Latu. Man born in uh, Nukulofa in Tonga. His cousin, incidentally, uh, Lotti Tuikalo. He plays for uh, Grenoble in the top 14 here in France. Crouch! Touch! Sit! Yeah, that side. Change of props. Can disrupt the scrums at times, can't it? We see it you know, week in, week out, no matter what level of rugby we're watching. Let's just hope that, uh, that Ref gets on top of it very quickly. As he said to them when they came on, it's been very good up until now, guys. Let's try and keep it that way. Yeah, and on the far side, it's Phil Kite making his first uh, appearance at 128 kilograms. Uh, He's actually heavier than the average uh, Australian Super 15 prop. Sit. And born in Auckland, the heaviest in the squad, would you believe? A solid scrum from Australia. Hodge to Northam in from the left flank. Uh, looking for work. 
Stanifov, little popper pass there for Michael Wells. He's got through a lot of work tonight, hasn't he? Standing forth without a doubt, but Wells also did a lot of good work at the breakdown. And here is the man I just mentioned, Phil Kite. And the GPS uh, old boys in Queensland. Balls up, some more. Great public schools, I think, GPS. Ready, ever ready. Wells cutting back inside and uh, making good headway, leaving two or three Fijians in his uh, wake. Driving forward, then it's uh, Latu and Kite, the two newcomers. Not slack goal. Sorry, uh, when they're not slackening off, though, Fiji in their defensive work, are they? They're not shying away from it. No, certainly not. Going in in, uh, in twos. Onside! Could be uh, a chance out wide if the ball can be spread quickly now because Lacey is there. Back on the 22 on this side of the field is Northam. And he's got Parker with him. The forwards want to take it up one more time. Could get there themselves. That's Patrick Sio, I think, with the effort. The supportive effort there of uh, the man who's just come on, Silatolulatu. Crossing for a sixth try for Australia. So order has been restored. This is not something you really associate Australian rugby with. It's just power in and around the fringes. But I think just the weights and the, the size of these guys physically, they are playing to their strength in this tournament. It's where they caused a lot of problems for New Zealand, was certainly just by going through the middle in the second half against New Zealand. As we see here, the ball just being snuck over the line there. Referee was in an excellent position here, and the replacement for Latu does very well. But it's... Um, you know, usually you associate Australian rugby as off, off, often with intricate back play, a lot of double rounds and things like that, and we go right back to the era of the Ella brothers and things like that, where it seemed to really start and go right through to the, the, the horns, the Jason Little, right through the Rod Capers and the likes of these midfielders who very intricate moves. Pat Howard's, you know, very good footballers, uh, without mentioning the Larkhams, of course. So there's your history of Australian rugby, but tonight... <laughs> Maybe we're seeing it rewritten. There's a new generation of very powerful, uh, and obviously there's a Pacific Island influence out there, definitely in this Australian side, and uh, they've been very, uh, very, very strong in the close quarters at carrying the ball. Yes, Latuli Latu looking for a Super 15 contract. Uh, we've just seen that one or two replacements come on. Josh King, replacement for Fiji, wearing 23. He actually. Is a student at Sydney University. Coming off is uh, the uh, try scorer early on for Fiji, Mosese Nyoni Mathawa. And a change of kicker as well for Fiji there. I think it was Luke Burton actually took over from uh, Rhys Hodge. First touch of the ball then uh, for Josh King. Actual fact. Uh, two players, one, two. If he and uh, Latu come into contact, then they know one another quite well because they're both students at Sydney University. Uh, Rokunduru doesn't look in a good way, the fullback. Just come inside. Well, we need some help here. Let's go. Doesn't the, the medic there from the Fijian won't be accused of a. Uh, been overly quick in getting out there to see him. Let's hope he's all right. Uh, the referee will need to uh, hold to play for a while, I think, until uh, Rokunduru gets the attention that he deserves. Just a chance for me to tell you that Angus Pulver has come on for Australia, wearing 21. He's a, another student at Sydney University. Scrum half. Well, the Australian uh, medical staff just going over to check he's all right, which is good to see. And uh, <laughs> a bit of a laugh about it was the eyes just winded. So, 
Are those his credentials, I wonder? His medical credentials? No. He went to the Rugby World Cup in 2007. And that's, uh, he enjoyed it by the looks of it, didn't certainly he? Did. <laughs> certainly he did. Well, I had one of those at one time. 2007. Oh, you classic French doctor. Yeah. It? Stanley Fuff jumping unopposed. Okay. Again, Australia some 10, 15 metres out from the Fijian try line, looking to get that rolling mall going. It's uh, Wells leading the charge. Tolia four, he'll have a go, surely, if he gets the ball in hand. Driving through the uh, Fijian defence again, the uh, burly Australian forwards. One more shove through, should do it. And there they are again. There's a big front row forwards. Can't get the ball down, though. A Fijian hand, surely, is under the ball somewhere. And referee Frazier is on the spot. Finally, though, they do cross over, and it's Burton who does claim the seventh try for Australia. Luke Burton, we saw him kick a conversion a few minutes ago. He got a try against New Zealand, and that's a second for him in this tournament, taking Australia out over the 40-point mark. It was a very good build-up play here. Here we just see the finish of it by uh, Burton just going over good body height. Not going to be stopped from that range there. We see there, well done by Burton. But good work once again by the Australian four-pack. They set up the initial drive and had to shift off the line a little bit. And then uh, it was Wells who took it on himself to take the play towards the post. And he's got great feet just before contact. That's why he makes so many yards in that close quarter area. And uh, did well to set up the play. Taken on another phase. And, uh, well, 13 to go. 44-12. That's suggest soon to be 46-12. Right-footed kicker, Luke Burton. Makes no mistake. And Australia edging nearer the half century of points. And still the uh, goodly crowd are still in their seats as we approach the final quarter of the final game in the pool stage here at the Stade de la Rabine in Vaughan. Who's coming off? Tom off, Tom off. One, so we've got one. Here we come. Is the man in possession of the ball. The replacement uh, scrum half for Dolan Bauer. He started the first game. And the second game also for Fiji against uh, New Zealand and Ireland. We're going to see New Zealand, uh, Fiji throw the ball about. They can play some uh, sunshine rugby. We've seen glimpses of it in this uh, tournament. But more often than not, they've been on the back foot and on the receiving end of some hefty tackles. Douglas ducks under Patrick Sio. Wanga. No get and call for it. There's no room at all for uh, Kere Kere to manoeuvre the uh, huge uh, Fijian lock. Lost board. No, just relentless from Australia as the Fiji trying to throw the ball around on the back foot under pressure. And you really feel until Fiji can sort out these set piece problems. And I know it's an ongoing problem within Fiji and rugby, and has been for years and years and years. But until they can sort out the technical elements of the game, it's going to be difficult for them to compete. And you know, I, you applaud the ambition of staying in this Tier 1 uh, category in the Junior World Championship, and uh, that's definitely something to aspire towards. But I just wonder if they're helping themselves, and maybe, you know, a little bit of time away at times could possibly, you know, with, with help from the IRB specialist coaches and things, if you like, that they can really try and rectify and help grow Fiji and rugby by just really nailing down these technical aspects of the game. It's 46 to 12 here, but in uh, La Roche Surion, it's much, much closer. With France 19, South Africa 21, with 10 minutes to go. So it's a three-cornered fight in uh, in Pool uh, A, with England having uh, trounced USA 109 points to nil. They can't do any more. But with France causing problems, we all know that uh, France, at whatever level, they have one game in them in the championship, uh, and it looks as if they've reserved their best game. Uh, for the uh, reigning world champions, South Africa. So let's see how that one pans out and who does actually go through to the cup semi-final. Uh, 
crossing in midfield uh, and uh, Brad Lacey will have to come all the way back. That was close. Yeah, well, it was close. It was, you know, we've seen, uh, we saw the Irish execute exactly the same move uh, during the, earlier in the, in the tournament and even trying it again tonight. The trail runner back on the inside and unfortunately... You just got ahead of there, did Lacey or Satini at the uh, the fullback there, and it was a, a very nice line they picked. Just looking for the defender on the inside who's dropping off and trying to exploit that hole. So it looks as if two teams will go through from uh, Pool A to the. Uh, Cup semi-final as things stand. <laughs> Wales and New Zealand already through. Get to see of their wins today. 36 to 21. That was New Zealand's uh, win over Ireland. And uh, Wales defeated Argentina 24 to 20. Wait for it. Eight. Fully bound. Don't fire them in. Do you understand? So 10 minutes to go here in uh, Vaughan, 46 to 12. Ireland put 46 points uh, on Fiji, but kept their try line intact. Fiji have uh, crossed twice here, so they've broken their deck. Kunavori wants to run the ball. They have to retain possession here. Now then, this is better. Kunavori. Well, if anybody deserves a try, it's the centre. But back there is Northam. Kunavori giving chase and getting his man as well. So let's see how Australia can defend here. Admirably, that's the uh, the answer as Hodge gets the ball away into touch. But uh, Kunavori to the fore there. Nasoni. So Australia just about managing to clear their lines and again listen to the crowd <laughs> <laughs> Fiji crowd pleasers certainly and willing them to score another try here it all starts at the line out but Australia had one too many people in the line out away goes Kim Welly took Galau the uh, lock forward into midfield on the angle piling okay. into the uh, to the contact area the Fijians it's ball it's been slowed down as Australia competes for possession here they may well have robbed it or have they no it's there for Wanga that's uh, Mbalendao upended nothing wrong with that no. Get off your feet line on the ground <laughs> Oh, another reluctant blow of the whistle there by the referee. He had no choice because the counter rucking again was superb by Australia. Yeah, it was the captain. It's okay, I'm Mathu. I didn't see it. Oh, no, I'm not saying. Okay. I'll keep an eye on it. Eh? Yeah, Michael Wells uh, saw something untoward, I think, and just uh, drawing the referee's attention captain. to it. Captain. Stuff, okay? Good referee. Taking heed of what was being suggested by the opposition captain and then preferring to give a warning before reacting to what's happened afterwards. And uh, you know, I applaud that. The referee prepared to listen to the, the captains and their, uh, their, I won't say complaints, but their thoughts. <laughs> Jake McIntyre now is that uh, outside half. Replacement giving chase, and uh, this one is uh, Josh King does well to get away from the uh, initial tackle but lacks support here. Just to say that uh, Hodge has uh, stepped back into the fullback position, and Sutini has come up to center. That's uh, Silasa Kerikeri. Kunavore. Can Fiji get a, a third try? Before the final whistle, Wang into midfield. 
This is better. Rock and Duro. Good hands. The King. Good defence as well from uh, Australia. Australia have stolen it uh, through uh, Silla Tululatu. Number 17. And it's the Fiji number 17 who makes his presence felt there. Aseria Robombarambavaru. Mivore once again, referee Fraser happy that the ball didn't go forward to his Sese. <laughs> and the best they can hope for there is a penalty. Douglas quickly takes the penalty oh. there and brings uh, Pithelliato, the replacement, uh, onto the ball. It's uh, very, very loose and very, very untidy. Thank this you. probably suits the Fijians though. Driving in low and hard. There's uh, Chuchi Ravula wearing 18. Just come on. And again, not for the first time, Rokonduru is in uh, some difficulty. Here it is. Back on his feet. Four minutes or so. Australia really re responded to the physical oh, yeah. challenge, haven't they? They've really you know, impressed with the way they've stepped up in the second half, matching tackle after tackle, causing trouble in the breakdown areas, good counter-rucking. Some very good, you know, some good technical stuff here on display here by Australia, which I'm sure will please, please the coaches because I know there's huge disappointment after that Irish loss, the narrow loss to Ireland, where they didn't really show up, did they? No, they did the first time out, and uh, you know you have to come out uh, with intent in the opening match. And Ireland took the game to Australia right from the outset, just as New Zealand did as well. And New Zealand did well to hold out in the end uh, against the resurgent uh, Australia. That was probably their best uh, passage of play in the second half against uh, New Zealand, and this well, very much a reserve uh, squad. Uh, I think they'll be frustrated within themselves knowing when they've shown over 40 minutes of what they could do, you know, when they really bought that attitude that you needed to, to really take the game to the New Zealanders. And, uh, you know, given what happened in the game previously and now the fact that they're not competing for a semi-final spot, it's disappointing, isn't it? It certainly is uh, for them. Uh, Fiji will be uh, relegated to the bottom uh, pool of teams trying to avoid uh, the relegation to the Junior World Rugby Trophy. So it's all to play for for Fiji in, uh, during the last week of the tournament. And uh, in the second block, Australia will find themselves uh, looking to better their eighth uh, seed ranking coming into this tournament. Let's go, five. Come on. Let's go. Once again, cramp settling in, and we've seen it in every single game, haven't we? The boys have been stretched to their limits physically here, but uh, well, we now get down to the next round. It's serious stuff, isn't it, in terms of, uh, Last chance. Do not stand you know, the semi-finals and guys play, you know, teams playing for position and rankings and all very important games still to come. Yeah, Kunavore has uh, looked uh, pretty good for Fiji as he stepped Crouch. into the inside centre position. Not sure what else Bill Gandola Touch. will have learnt uh, from uh, uh, his experimental uh, perhaps uh, positioning of players uh, for this match. But everyone's had a run out now. Here comes Kunavore again, stepping out of the tackle of Mark Baldwin, the number seven. Almost up to the Australian 22. Two minutes remaining. Where you are. Australia now committing the errors as Fiji finished strongly, as they have done, it has to be said, in uh, both uh, previous matches. Australia not back stop, to 10 metres. Push. Push. And Fiji desperately looking for their third try. Roughly Frazier wanting the uh, penalty to be taken from the mark. And that might be a metre or two closer to the Australian try line. They still have to break down the Australian defence, though, which has uh, looked... Uh, Pretty solid uh, throughout this match. Well, they're going to pack themselves going to the line out. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not sure there'll be many in the crowd here would be thinking that uh, that's the way you're going to break down this Australian side. But anyway, they're going to back themselves. And you sort of the crowd are right into this one. There they are down the far end of the uh, park there at the start. Larabin on the narrow side. Uh, Wanga did well to keep the ball in play. And... Uh, 
Yeah, Fiji should get a, a second chance. No, 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 no. Still a two-point game at uh, La Roche Souillon, France 19, uh, South Africa 21, just under two minutes to go in that match. So it's all nip and tuck in uh, Pool A, but here it's a comfortable win for Australia. It's just a matter now of whether Fiji can claim uh, a third try. Uh, majority of the uh, supporters in the crowd willing uh, Fiji to get that elusive third try, which will bring greater uh, respectability to the final scoreline. But uh, let's give credit where it's due. Seven tries for Australia. Four in the first half. The uh, bonus point was secured before the break, and Australia had three more tries in the uh, second half. And looking good uh, for their first win in the tournament. So just time then for this line out looking for the accuracy from uh, Penaya Thakombao, who's the replacement uh, hooker. Down the front, looks for Robombaravu. And Fiji, uh, that was their last throw of the dice, and uh, a little bit of nonsense as well. Which is uncalled for, really. So we're almost at the 80 minutes. As Australia have an opportunity to clear the lines. And there it is. Uh, Rhys Hodge with the final kick and the final act of this match. It's been uh, a workmanlike performance from Australia. They will challenge uh, for those positions between 5th and 8th. And we look to improve on their eighth rankings coming into this tournament. As for Fiji, well, they're down in that uh, relegation battle and will look to retain their tier one status. At least they've scored two tries this evening against Australia. Well taken tries as they were from Yona Mathawa and Captain Ezekiah Matthew. But it's finished here at the Stade de la Rabine in Van with a full time scoreline, which reads Australia 46, Fiji 12. The forward effort brought uh, the reward in the second half. Uh, CEO setting it up, and again, the ever present uh, Tom Staniforth. Vessels, lovely take there by Hodge. And Northam over in the corner. That was uh, Australia's fifth try. Lovely pick up there by Hodge. The delivery to uh, Luke Burton, who had a prominent uh, second half. Australia stretching the Fijian defence. But Fiji also uh, had their moment. Lovely pass out to, to Douglas. Kunavore took it back in. This was the best passage of play from uh, Fiji in the, the second half. The hooker, Vatumbua, opened the door. Alia Ratuthove pushed it wider, open, and in the end it was Ezekiel Mato, the captain that delivered the try. A second uh, for Fiji. Lovely sleight of hand from the hooker to Naivatumbua. But uh, Fiji, Australia rather, were well in control. And despite uh, this uh, valiant effort and some lovely uh, handling skills from the Fijians, order was restored with uh, first Latu, the replacement prop forward, going over close to. Burton adding the conversion and adding uh, another to his own try. Making it seven tries in total and another comprehensive defeat uh, for Fiji. That was Burton's try, 46 to 12, the final scoreline, with Burton finishing off with a, a nine point tally. So, possession, well, as we saw. 63% to Australia, 37 to Fiji, 46 points scored uh, from the visits uh, to the uh, Fiji 22.
from eight visits that is and that is the uh, the sum total of the uh, match statistics the tackles made fiji had to make 101 twice the number almost uh, of those uh, tackles that had to be made by the australians so hand checks all round uh, from uh, the supporters and uh, family and friends as well of uh, the victorious australian team their first victory in this tournament and uh, it's a little uh, more comfortable now for the australians than it was after their second defeat at the hands of us of new zealand on sunday 14 to 10 but that was oh so close and it could have out turned out differently for the uh, young wallabies but they congratulate themselves they can congratulate themselves on a job uh, well done here on the final day of the pool stages here in van ezekiel Mathu, the fijian captain uh, signing autograph we can hear now from uh, uh, a victorious uh, Australian captain, no doubt, with Simon Mannix. Down here on the sideline with the winning Australian captain. Must be very pleased with the effort tonight after a uh, you know, pretty heroic second half effort against New Zealand four days earlier. Oh, the effort from the boys the whole tournament has been great. You can't fault anyone's effort in all three games. and uh, It was tough taking that loss to the Kiwis and the Irish, but the boys stuck in the whole way together and it was the same again tonight. We wanted to come in with a bonus point win and that's what we got. So. The challenge to you was a mental one, wasn't it? Because those two games that you mentioned previously were very tight affairs. So good to see, you know, plenty of plenty of strong mental fortitude within the side. Yeah, well, it's really easy to just drop off after two consecutive losses like that early in the tournament. And for the boys to come out and get the bonus point win and not, not give in right to the end, it's, it's a good sign. It's, it shows the mentality of the boys and what a great bunch they are. Yeah, which is, you know, most something that you guys and the coaching staff, I'm sure, are very proud of. And now it's, now the focus is on trying to finish up with ranking points as high as possible. Yeah, that's it. We've still got two games left and hopefully we finish fifth. We've got to win both games and we'll, and we'll get, and we'll reach that goal. We'll finish as best as we can. And yeah, all the boys play for the jersey and can't wait to get in and finish it off the tournament well. That's what it's all about. Good luck to you and I hope it goes well. Thank you very much. Yeah, good luck to uh, Curtis Browning as the Fijians and the Australians uh, sign uh, autographs. Terrific interest in this tournament here in Brittany and in particular in Van. So let's see then. Pool B, the news today. New Zealand have defeated Ireland by 31 points to 26. New Zealand go through. Australia defeated Fiji by 46 to 12. And Ireland just fell short in the end. Uh, South Africa... Well, they uh, have defeated France, but that was a close run thing, 26-19. Calculators out. England could well go through. They defeated the USA by 109 points to nil. And I'm almost sure that's the highest score ever in the Junior World Championship. Whilst in Pool C, it's more clear-cut. Wales are through by virtue of that narrow victory in the end. Uh, it was a Sam Davis penalty that took them out to a five-point margin over Argentina, 25-20. to 20. Scotland defeated Samoa, and that was another close run thing. So Scotland will join Australia in uh, the battle for the fifth to eighth rankings, courtesy of that victory over the Islanders by 36 to 33 we look ahead to the semi-finals next tuesday here in van but for now from all the team it's a very good night